chose to look at this theme of a hermit because often as an artist you find yourself separated and that separation gives yourself the opportunity to look back into the world. And I think by looking back into something, you can try to investigate what meaning there may be out there for yourself and for others, perhaps. I was kind of particularly inspired by one called John Big, who uh, is the hermit of Dinton and lived in a cave for 30 years. John Big was reportedly the executioner of Charles I um, and obviously went into hiding. <laughs> he lived in this cave and then walked eight miles a day to get food and obviously the walking ruins his shoes and the only thing he ever asked for in 30 years was pieces of leather and he stitched the pieces of leather to his shoes and his clothes and create these kind of terribly gnarly kind of artifacts which uh, are in fact in, uh, well one shoe is in the Ashmolean Museum in, in Oxford. Uh, and it kind of inspired me that actually something about that process of uh, recycling was quite important to my work. Large paintings became small paintings. I kind of tore them up and ripped them up um, as if they were fragments of leather almost and restitched them together and go, went through this per process of salvaging something and trying to reinvest in it for the future. I think for a painter, the edge probably holds a whole lot of information. It's the whole history of the painting. The paintings actually are really uh, largely quite dark and dense and sticky and tactile. The surfaces are investigated in ways that we're not currently seeing within painting. They're quite sticky and uh, drips and they still look as though they're wet in places. And I think that invites you to see them through almost trying to touch them. And so it's not something that you can get from a distance. You have to kind of draw yourself into them and literally stick your nose to the surface. While they're very dark, colour is really important. And actually, it works in a number of ways. It breaks the seriousness of the darkness sometimes. And actually, it kind of brings light back to the paintings. The surfaces become quite different when glazes are added. And so the kind of shifting of the colours help the paintings dance around, perhaps. And actually, by changing the colour, shifting the surface, you kind of get involved in the surface even more as a viewer, I think. I often describe myself as a painter that makes paintings, which is an odd statement. However, the emphasis is on the make paintings. And that, that is to do with someone literally being in the studio on a daily basis, having a daily practice, playing with things with their hands and their fingertips and actually literally crafting something for themselves. Now this might not sound revolutionary, but it's something that I think people are shifting towards. They want authentic relationships to the world. These paintings aren't merely about um, seeing something. In fact, they're probably about blindness as much as they are about sight. Um, and in that way, they're kind of made through touch. Um, and this idea of touch, I suppose, is something to do with um, inhabiting a painting to try and find out what it's all about. These paintings are to do with kind of digging oneself a hole and getting in there and moving things around with my hands until my eyes recognise something and become involved and then until my whole body becomes involved. I think if people look at these paintings, the thing that they may take away with them isn't necessarily any answer to anything, but actually I think they'll find themselves engaged in questioning. And actually that's largely to do with what an artist does. Uh, so when I'm in my studio, it is a day of questioning. And I think these paintings are kind of organic enough to allow the viewer to have the same process.